So, uh, good afternoon. I'm going to talk about something uh, about IoT. Now, this is a cloud event. In the past couple of years, I've been talking about how enterprise here in Hong Kong adopts cloud. Now, this year, I changed the topic a little bit, and most of the time, it's going to be talking about what's IoT and how IoT may actually help us uh, in the near future. But the key is that why cloud is actually ties to IoT. One very, very common you know, um, situation is that mobile cloud actually enable lots of things to happen. Now, this is not part of my presentation. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, get a quick survey. How many of you use iPhone? iPhone. iPhone. OK. How many of you actually use iPhone 2, right? 2, 3. 2 or 3. How many of you use iPhone 2 or 3? Do you know how many sensors are there in the iPhone 2 or 3? How many sensors? OK. Put it the other way. How many of you are now using iPhone 6 or 7? Raise hand. You know how many sensors are there in iPhone 6 or 7? Guess. Five? Six? Tell what? Nine. At least nine sensors. OK, go back to the question about iPhone 2 or 3. You know how many sensors are there? No sensor? Sorry. Four already. OK, you can see how all this very common device that we every day have basically have sensing capabilities. IoT, one of the very, very important elements is actually doing sensing. And then sensing, collecting data, and then you get intelligence out from the data, and then you do rules engine to actually direct what you need to do or your system needs to do, right? So it's very important. And basically, IoT already there. Many years ago, RFID. Do you think RFID is something new? No. It's part of I uh, IoT. Now it's kind of classified as IoT. But what I want to say is it's going to be much, much more application going to be using IoT approach to make our life easier. And also, in the later slide, when I'm going to talk about it, it's going to make our life safer. OK? Sometimes IoT is about financial return to enterprise. Uh, sometimes it's about people's lives. So in a minute, I hope all this you know, presentation ready, I can talk to you about one very, very important and also, I believe, it's going to happen in the next five to seven years, seven, five to seven years, then you will, we all be able to benefit from IoT. OK, who are we? I'm not going to talk about this. Just let you know that HKT is not just a connectivity provider, but we actually continues to innovate. We actually do smart charging, charging for electric vehicles. We also do mobile payment, tap and go. And at the same time, we continue to look into new technologies that actually can help us, help citizens, help enterprises. So IoT is one of the enablement technologies that help us to do that, to achieve that. But we need to innovate. Uh, we understand. Gartner say that there's going to be billions of IoT units. And at the same time, I will tell you that there are lots of investment actually pouring into the IoT space. Now, in the past, when we talk about cloud, who actually in the ecosystem? Basically, cloud service provider, maybe server company, maybe technology company like networking company, cabling company, data center, right? They are all the, together with software and application. Now, IoT is talking about cloud, all their above ecosystem partners like server, networking partners, data center partners still there. But added the fact that there will be tons of uh, providers, manufacturers doing sensor. That's a very important part of it. So the investment is talking about much, much, can be much, much larger than cloud. Secondly, when you get connected, I talk about iPhone. You use your mobile network to get connected. Mobile network evolution is another very important part that we need to tackle together to actually get the benefits, most benefit out of IoT. And standard 
and ecosystem is equally important. Now, this is uh, one research company saying that oh, there are all different applications. You may not know what exactly here. It's talking about different industry sector, and they have different applications. Now, to me, my experience is that, honestly, some of their already available technology RFID, if you want to classify as IoT, it's OK. It's already there. But there are some other new area that we should be looking into. Talks about drivers, about ubiquity of mobile network. Mobile network is one very important you know, element for enabling IoT. But bear in mind, we just need connectivity. It can be wire. It can be 3G, 4G, 5G. It can be, at the moment, we talk about low power WAN. All these data technologies can help us to do IoT. Uh, sensor becoming more and more cost effective is talking about less than $1 US for a sensor. All depends on different sensors. But IoT actually can make us profitable. It can be enterprise. It can be as a community, as the government, make the government profitable. How we can do that? Now, if you can recall, this is something happened Monday, on Monday, this week. Can you recall? This one is actually get a, a van, a you know, vehicle actually bumped into a trucking, uh, a working truck in Shenzhen Bridge, the Shenzhen Bay Bridge. Okay? Now that actually the driver died. Okay? Can we do something about it? Can we do something about it? We can, if we can save life, what's going to be the economic benefits given to the community? The loss of uh, traffic accident. This is just mentioned about working trucks, okay? Very, very easily in there, in, in, at night, you know, people driving and I hit the working truck accidentally. People died, people get injured. One of the IoT applications I want to talk about here is about what we call CV2X, V2V, V2P. How are we going to connect all this vehicle together? so that they know what exactly there will be hazard. There will be a working truck in front of the road, maybe one kilometer down the road, or maybe two kilometers down the road. You already got that kind of information. Now, one very extreme case is talking about you know, driverless driving. But this is one extreme case. But if we're not talking about driverless driving, just having IoT to save life, would that be really useful? Now, it's not just talking about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. It's all about vehicles-to-pedestrian communication, OK? And vehicles-to-other established facilities communication so that they can all know each other what's going on, OK? Just uh, something you will know later on, talk, the industry actually talked quite a lot. Using cellular, using mobile network to do vehicle-to-everything, using technology to do vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication and also vehicle-to-pedestrian communication. But the whole lot of use case. Just let me explain a little bit. Say, for example, you know there's a car in front, so forward collision warning, OK? Warn you, and then you do something about it. Of course, you can do it on your own as a driver, or you can do it maybe later on, maybe you enable the car to do it for you. Do not pass warning. You want to go to the another lane, there's another car actually coming through. OK? Um, blind intersection. Now, that one is interesting. Now, it's not about vehicle to vehicle communication, because some of them, they are not really communicating line of sight. Because it's right at the corner, right? The car is getting by from here, and the other one is coming through from the other side. If we can actually stop that kind of traffic accident happen, would it be really useful? Can we use technology? Can we use sensor on the car and also other facility on the road to enable that happen? Um, and other things, we now doing a little bit of a discover parking charging facility. More static, but still it's going to benefit citizens. Another thing is sometimes it's not just vehicle to vehicle. This is uh, VRU, a term called vulnerable road user, basically a road user. Some of them. Comparatively, they are elderly people. Can we help them if they have a sensor? And the system, the brain, actually can know 
which you know, elderly people actually in, in what area, what are they intends to do? And they're walking, are they going to walk across a pathway? This is something I think really, really useful for us to make our community savior. Now this, just one example of execution is using cellular to do vehicle to everything. So it's talking about network-based communication using cellular network. And this is this part, the yellow part, the green part, if you like. And also, we will be enabled by using these technologies to have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication and also V2P to pedestrian communication. That is going to help a lot. We actually strike a consortium together with Huawei, Qualcomm, and also Astri. And what we want to do here, just highlight the last sentence, is make our road safer and Hong Kong a better living place. This is our vision. We talked about cloud in the past, how we're going to help you know, individuals and also enterprise. But when we talk about IoT, sometimes we can see the benefits can, much, can be much, much larger. And the effects to the community can be huge. And we'll be driving this continues to innovate, work with government officials to make this happen because the benefits is huge. But going back, while we talk to our enterprise customer, they're still, they want to do IoT. But what are the barriers? Now, I'm not talking about um, smart city, smart mobility. Let's go back to enterprise. What are the barriers of deploying IoT? Security. Everybody knows that, right? Last week, wanna cry. Okay, give you another research map. This is about mapping out all the internet IoT, internet of things, security related activities that may happen. Now, very interesting. Is it going to be IoT becomes internet of threats or only become an internet of testing? Now, what do I say is testing? At the moment, we see just some new innovation about IoT. But at the moment, the uh, enterprise is actually using it as a testing environment. Uh, we haven't been to a situation that we are very confident to put some IoT end-to-end -end service onto production environment. But I would say this is a part of the journey. It's not going to happen today, tomorrow, but I'm very confident that it's going to happen in a couple of months, or if not, in a year. Data privacy? Data sovereignty issue is still one problem. Why? IoT actually collecting tons, tons of data. You can imagine your iPhone, how much data you actually collected by different applications within your iPhone. They can actually collect all the sensors information. And that's for the good things is you can actually derive lots of things, lots of values from it, but at the same time, how are you going to keep the data? If you are enterprise, how are you going to keep, it, keep the data safely? Because some of the data may be actually your own data, and you don't want to be leaked out to other, into, to other company. And you don't want to leak out, in the worst case, to hackers that actually send you ransom, right? Technological fragmentation. Uh, I just mentioned about connectivity. We have lots of options wire and wireless. But at the same time, if you know, in terms of IoT platform, there are lots of, lots of platform here in the market. People don't know how to choose. Now, I think this is another situation that everybody wants to get you know, benefits, actually, actually want to penetrate into the market, but at the same time, technologically, they are very fragmented. So what's the impact to enterprise? Enterprise talks about IoT. They ask us a question very often. When are, you go, when are you seeing the proposed sensor going to be replaced? Is it going to be replaced in five years? Is it going to be charged you know, every minute? Is it going to be last for 10 years? We have that kind of conversation. Now, technological fragmentation actually causes cautiousness of our enterprise to deploy IoT because they don't know whether or not five years' lifetime is good enough and whether or not 10 years' lifetime should be good enough, but they do not know whether you can keep the promise to deliver 10 years' lifetime, right? Technology, actually, 
help us to innovate, to do a little bit more, but there are uncertainty. Implementation. Well, cloud is still talking about you know, all the computing, all the application, inside data center, in the, inside the cloud provider. But IoT talks about at least one thing more, installation of sensor. So that's why importance to note that 10 year sensor life is much better than three year sensor life, right? Because they need to do all this implementation, getting the engineer, getting service provider to help them to do that. So this is one of the challenges we, have, we never come across when we do cloud business. So IoT success factor, I would say that people talk about ROI, and this is very important. And to me, as a service provider, as an IoT managed service provider, we want to go into that market. We understand having a very clear ROI to our customer is very important. And sometimes all this trial actually help us to do that. And cross-platform, you know, cross-technology, cross-platform, we need to have the expert to do that. And in terms of security, in terms of manageability, this is another area I, need, I, I will have a slide to explain very briefly later on. This is an ITU, a, a standard, talks about IoT architecture. You can see that the device layer is actually all the sensor. And then you can have different wire, wireless network layer to connect the sensor to the brain. Now, the brain can be the service support layer that control all this device, and also application layer that will be all the intelligence comes in. Now, data, where is it? Data normally sit on this side. So that's why many people actually can leverage on the data collected from IoT sensor, and then do their application, and then do their programming, and they get intelligence from it, okay? And manageability, security on the two sides. What I want to say here, remember there are generic support capabilities. And here is another specific. We see there are situation and demand for specific domain expertise to analyze data. Okay? I just, just one example is data. I talk about data here. Because normally you got data pool to actually store data. But how you are going to store it with the usage of particular industry is something and other area that we need experts to help. This is a distributed cloud. What we're going to see from my perspective, from our perspective is device, gateway, transport, and we were going to have a core IoT cloud. Now for this one, all the intelligence or the management of the device are there. But at the same time, we actually need to have different innovation to do a workflow Rule engine, we need to do dashboard. Actually, you know what happened you know, from the sensor. And you do all this big data analysis using expert system. So it's just going to be multiple cloud. Now, our view is that when we go to IoT, data is very important. Application, equally important. We're going to face a situation that every IoT project may be involving multi-clouds. So there will be a strategy there, how you're going to manage multi-cloud to achieve IoT benefits. And technology actually changed quite a lot. I would say that every part of the value chain changed quite a lot. Thirdly, expertise. You, can, you cannot imagine someone doing a workflow, you know, expert, can do big data analysis really great. Say, for example, if customer, your customer or your friend told you that my company has a data scientist pool, I have five data scientists, 10 data scientists, I can tell you probably he's lying. I seldom see actually one enterprise have more than two data scientists. The point is that data scientists still scare resources, still lots of, not lots of people to do. So we need actually working very closely together with different cloud, with different cloud service provider, with different experts together. Data, data cloud. What I want to say here, we have hot data, we have warm data, cold data, and we still have different technology expertise we need to manage. Very quick, this is my almost last slide. Just want to have a quick conclusion. We need multi-cloud, but equally important, we need multidisciplinary expertise. We need people. System integration plays a very important role. 
cloud is not that kind of system integration sometimes. And the future of cloud and IoT, we actually need technology people and at the same time, passion. We need a team of uh, people that really wants that to succeed and we work together. And HKD is here, uh, kind of uh, encourage you to talk to us. We have a big booth there, talk to us, talk to any of our colleagues to understand how we can work together to actually get benefits of IoT to the community. Imagination is very important. Okay, Albert Einstein. But the last one I want to share, we still have a long way to go. This guy, Alan Turney, is the uh, father of uh, computer science. And also, if you Google it, him is also the father of artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is, something, is not something new. But we take it again this year, this, this, the last 18 months. This guy died already, but they already tell us the loss of, loss of opportunity. And we need to walk this road along together. So I hope you can actually spend some time, go to our booth, J15, talk to our colleagues, and then we hope we can have an IoT community very, very soon. Thank you very much.